Just to clarify, I am accused of helping my friends get big on TikTok. The girls do not even know the earnings they make from posts on OnlyFans. Primarily, I'm going to work these bitches like slaves and then make them uh, work more hours and hours and hours. I work them like slaves. No, work like slaves. Minimum 10 to 12 hours a day. I've got some exciting news. We've got a brand new sponsor. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Well, who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, your board certified criminal defense lawyer. You're probably wondering, what the hell is this thing, right? See, when I was on my motorcycle trip, I was wearing Step 1. Step 1 is a high performance underwear, and it's just awesome. But I went 8,500 miles from Minneapolis all the way to Alaska and around Alaska and back. And guess what? I didn't chafe, I didn't sweat. I, it was amazing, just absolutely amazing. Step 1 is a brand new sponsor for CLR. You're going to get a deal. Uh, on these underwear. They're made out of this viscose from organic bamboo. They have a panel right here in between the legs that uh, keep you from chafing. It's got a little pouch for your uh, nestled goods. It's just an amazing product. Wore them for 8,500 miles. If you order these and you put in the code Bruce Rivers all together caps as the promo code when you check out, you'll get 25% off. They also have Black Friday sales, so up to 50% off. So make sure you check that out. And they have a 30 day guarantee. So if you don't like them, for whatever reason, you return them and you get your money back. Step One's got all kinds of different patterns, different colors. Whatever your style is, they got your style. Click on the link below and make sure you put in the promo code Bruce Rivers. I highly recommend you go and order. So today we're reacting to Andrew Tate's interview with Pierce Morgan. This is an interesting interview and we're going to dive into it. And this is why when you have a criminal case pending, you shut the fuck up. You don't. Anything he says is fair game for court. And I just can't believe... First of all, I guarantee his lawyers weren't endorsing him doing this. This is for public consumption. One of the things we're going to do here is we're going to match or test what he says in the interview compared to what's in the indictment. And what's in the indictment is based on evidence. It's based on what people have either said or what he has said. So let's just get right into this. Uh, well, nearly a year since we last sat down together. Very wow. different time. It was in my London studio. And eight days after that, you got arrested. What's the year been like for you? It's certainly been an interesting one. I've been constrained this entire... Why does he have the glasses on? Honestly, I, I know he's part of his top G image. But as you'll see, as he gets into this, he has... And I have watched this before, so you're going to get my um, analysis of this. But he's got, he's got a major criminal case pending where you can go to prison for quite a long time. You'll see that he doesn't address anything head on. It's all periphery. It's all generalities and, and, uh, and denials that just don't make sense. For a year, I spent 93 days in a Romanian dungeon, five months locked in my house, and now I'm restrained within the country of Romania. So it's certainly been a turbulent time. The moment you got arrested, it was all pretty dramatic. The video came out, the world saw it. A lot of people smashing into your your home, did you have any inkling, warning that something like this may happen? I knew it. I kept saying before I was arrested on every single podcast I did, I said, you get three lives in the world. The first life, they're going to cancel you. They're going to slander you. They're going to delete your access to social media so you can't defend yourself. The second life, they're going to try and put you in jail for no reason. And if you continue to speak against the power, they're going to assassinate you. Okay, they're not going to assassinate him because it's not a death penalty type case. But I will have to say that... Um, He's given, he had the keys to the kingdom. And it's his actions that have caused all this, not just some willy nilly actions of the government. I knew I was on my second life. I kept saying it, I knew it was coming. I didn't know the bullshit reason they'd use, but I found out once I was in a cell. Bullshit reason. We're going to get into that bullshit reason. And it's not just bullshit. Now, remember, he, it's sex trafficking. So, what are the three things? Force. Fraud or coercion. When you were arrested, you, you didn't actually, you don't speak any Romanian at Zero. all. And they didn't speak English to you. Correct. So you, you were taken to a cell. You had no idea what they were alleging you'd done. 
I was arrested on the 27th of December, so because of Christmas and New Year's and other problems, they couldn't even translate my paperwork for two weeks. So for the first two That's one of the things I don't like about having an investigative detention because you're sitting there and you can't defend yourself and you can't get out because you don't know what the hell's going on. Two weeks I was in a prison cell, I had no idea why. I was given papers in Romanian. I could read human trafficking, I understood, but I was like, human trafficking who, when, what, none of this makes sense. I waited two entire weeks inside of my cell before I was given an English translation, and then I realized exactly how ridiculous the whole case was. So one of the things, you can see how he talks very fast, and he really thinks like uh, very quickly, and you can tell that he, oh, he knows everything he's talking about because he is speaking very, f that is a cover, right? That is just his way of speaking to have authority, and, and he sounds like he's legitimate. Like, like, oh, he must be telling the truth because he's got that cadence in his voice. Not so. Just to clarify, I am accused of helping my friends get big on TikTok. Okay, helping my friends get big on TikTok. Is that what you're being accused of? He would have these girls live stream TikToks. They would have to do this for hours and hours on end. They do it for 6, 8, 10, 12 hours a day. And that would be a feeder to OnlyFans. So he would create these OnlyFans that he's making shit tons of money, making money off TikTok, making money off, off of the OnlyFans, but not even telling these girls about the OnlyFans. That is what I'm accused of. I told some girls I know how to post on TikTok to become viral when I was at the time the most viral person on the planet. If we go to page 30 of the indictment, it says the income obtained from the videos posted on TikTok is a split 50-50, meaning half the amount remains with the girls and the other half goes to the Tate brothers. The girls do not even know the earnings they make from posts on OnlyFans. So they don't even know that there's a whole other revenue stream. A and so he's using them in both contexts, taking at least half their earnings He's, he's conning them and doing the OnlyFans without, without telling them. And the webcam business was still going strong in 2020. I actually have to give massive credit to the Romanian judicial system because a judge one day sat down and said, why are these boys in jail and let us go? I don't know if I would have had a fair shot like that in many other nations. When so if you remember right, they had to indict him, I think, by June. All right? So the judge didn't just say... That there's, oh, let's, let's let these poor young men out, you know. They had to kind of set up a, a set of circumstances where they wouldn't flee and they wouldn't be a harm to the public. And so they put him on house arrest. But at the time, they still took all of his assets. Charging was still ongoing. And so this business that the judge just, just all of a sudden had sympathy for these boys because they didn't do anything wrong is so ridiculous. So this episode, just like all of our episodes, is brought to you by what? By eSign.com. eSign.com is a very effective way to remotely do business. I use it all the time in my practice when I send out a retainer agreement or get medical records. Let's say for the sake of example, you have a business deal and you need to get it done fast. Well, eSign.com is a very effective way to get it done fast. You download the app, you get three free signatures a month, you can email whatever document you need and the deal is done now. So I highly recommend you go to eSign and download the app and use it at your leisure. eSign.com, because if it's not eSign, no one signs. I think I asked you last time and you were a bit cryptic about it. You're not married yet. No. You have a partner who's the mother of your children. Correct. The same woman is the mother of all your kids? It's confidential. It's a bit stupid to say confidential. It, it is confidential, Pierce. It's confidential. I don't think you marry and have kids with it is confidential, surely. It is for me. Really? Of course, I am a basically number one enemy of the state peers. Look what they've done to me. What have they put me in jail for? Number one enemy of the state. You know, and if you look, the, the theme throughout his whole thing is what a victim he is. He's the victim, right? He is the absolute victim. But, you know, you know, and it's in the indictment and, and, and his own words that he talks about his own mafia ties. Talks about his ownership in casinos, you know, and let me just tell you something. He's done himself in. He is not a victim, not a victim, but he paints his, himself as a victim in this scenario. At the beginning of this garbage, people were sitting there thinking, maybe he's a human trafficker. It's been a year. Who? <laughs> show me a picture. Show me a video. Who's even a victim? There's nobody. The so methinks thou doth protest too much. Oh, uh, Mr. Tate, he says, who are they? Are they? They're in the fucking indictment.
There's seven of them. There's seven victims, and there are probably more. But there's seven victims in the indictment. It tells who they are. It's, it, it's redacted because it's got their, na- their initials, and they are identified. And then there's chat logs. He's chatting with these people. Chat logs between Georgiana threatening these, these women. There's chat logs between Mr. Wonderful here. And, they, and there's chat logs with Tristan. They're all talking to these girls. There's seven of them. Who, who are they? Who, 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 who. Bullshit. He knows exactly who they are. And not only that, there's also testimony from these girls. These are their statements. And you know, you, oh, they don't have any evidence. They just have statements. Statements, my dear, are evidence. The whole thing is made up. Well, we're going, to come, well, we're going to come to what they say you've done, right? We're going to come to that. But I'm just curious. You come out of prison. You've got no ability to access any of your assets. How have you been functioning financially since then? His own words aren't made up. He, he, he told you in his instructional videos, and those, those are used throughout the indictment. The indictment's 300 freaking pages. There's a lot of content there. And, you, and he tells you exactly how to control your woman, how, how they uh, you know, defraud them uh, out of half their income. And there's also all kinds of things in the indictment about, uh, that are corroborated with, with WhatsApp messages and his own words. But now remember, they swept whatever money that they thought he had. But he's being funded somehow. And tell me that that is not going to be a source of investigation for the cops. I believe in prayer and I trust in God. Well, prayer doesn't pay the bills. And I do. Oh, I believe in prayer and God. And I'm just a God-fearing guy that, you know, likes to have women online for sex and, I, and, and use them as slaves. Bullshit. Oh, you, you all of a sudden got religion after you got taken into custody? Give me a break. But who is funding your program now? Very best. But prayer doesn't pay the bills. Unfortunately, absolutely everything I own was seized by the Romanian state, so I'm just going to have to survive and do my very best. Yeah, but how? I'm doing my very best, Pierce. Have you got wealthy benefactors helping you? I'm doing my very best. I wish I had wealth. I'm doing, so he's not answering the question. And he doesn't have to answer the question, but why the fuck is he sitting there with his sunglasses on? Why doesn't he have his shirt off? I don't know. The benefactors. I wish I had people on my side. Yeah, you can't function on, on no income at all. Seems you can. How? I'm doing my very best, Pierce. What does that mean? See, now look at, the, look at what he's talking about. See the little smirk on his face? And, you know, you, you can't do it without any money. Apparently you can. <laughs> Fucking A. You know, this is a prosecutor's dream right here. Because he's a, anytime they can catch him in a lie... And his little smug fucking ego is going to be his downfall. It already is. Seems I'm doing my very best. Absolutely everything I own is owned, is taken by the Romanian state. I don't have anything they don't have. Now, listen to the coded language there. Absolutely everything I own. That means he's probably got women out there with shit in their name. That means he's hidden assets. And they're looking for those. What does that, what does that mean? It means that I believe in God and I pray for well, God's Every not going to pay your bills. God has been paying my bills so far, it seems. Mm. It's amazing how far faith can take you. It's often when you have absolutely nothing left, people turn to faith. But you should turn to faith first. And you should believe in God when things are good. And that he will be there when times are bad. Initially, you were put on this sort of rolling 30-day house arrest. And they kept renewing that month by month by month. And then in June, uh, you and your brother and two others were formally charged with rape, trafficking, and forming an organized crime group to sexually exploit Women and there were seven alleged victims named in the indictment. You said at the time, I look forward to being found innocent. Um, you said earlier, who are these women? Well, there are seven named in the indictment. Yeah, have you seen the videos of them on the internet saying we're not victims? They made us be victims. We told them. Well, we that will all victims. presumably be, be analysed in a trial. Do you know when the trial may be? I have no idea. It's uh, going to be. Do you, a do long you believe time. it will happen? I'm not sure. That's the one thing that I'm not clear on either. I've read articles where they say that the trial could be years away. And can you imagine, which I, I think in this country, we have the right to a speedy trial. There's a speedy, you know, if it's a federal case, you have the Speedy Trial Act, it's F, and you have the right to demand a speedy trial. So that means they only have a certain amount of time within which to present evidence to a jury. 
Um, you can waive that or, you know, have time excluded. But it can't just be, you know, open-ended. That's the one thing I, I don't like about this system. It could get to a point where a judge any time before the trial decides his case is garbage and throws it away. That ain't going to happen. That is not going to happen. And here's the other thing. He doesn't have the right to have a jury trial. It's a trial before a judge. If you ask me what I believe happened, it's very simple. They threw me in a jail cell knowing they had no case, knowing they had no victims, but they thought if they plaster me all over the MSM and they say that I'm a bad person and they call enough people. Okay, they have a 300-page indictment. 300 pages. Part of his words, many text messages, many, um, a lot of testimony from these seven ladies. People they will find. Go, go to 2115. The same women who say we were not exploited, he just told us how to do TikTok. Also, in the prosecution file, if you want to talk about it, there's not a single bank transfer. There's not a single piece of evidence for any money. So I'm accused of making money from TikTok, but they haven't found any money. There's no money, and the victims are saying, I didn't exploit them to do TikTok. What you, the whole thing is a joke. What is... So he says there's no money. There's just no money. There's no money. There's, he, follow the money. I, actually, whenever you have a case like this, you follow the money. In this regard, cash transfers were identified in the bank account of defendant Tate. 188,000 euros. 188,022 euros through 21 operations conducted between February 23rd, 2017 and July 18th, 2018. Defendant uh, Nigel Georgiana Manuel recorded receipts from defendant Tristan Tate in the amount of 71,000. I mean, it, it's replete. There's just, there's a uh, transfer after transfer after transfer. I mean, there's millions of dollars going on here. It's not like he says hundreds of millions of dollars, but it's a lot of money. So for him to say they don't have any money, you think that we wouldn't fucking look, Andrew? Of course we're going to look. And, and, and I guarantee you there's a document to back every one of these up. So for him to say, but this is pub public relations. That's all it is. I'm the victim. There's nothing to see here. You know. I think, I think problematic, problematic for you is the war room, which was... Uh, Miscategorized and misunderstood. So it was called the war room. Correct. Okay. And it had a lot of people who were dubbed the generals who ran the war room Correct. for you. And the war room had five to six hundred members. You paid, I think, six thousand plus dollars to be a member of this. And when you saw the the logs of the web chats between people from the war room to each other. A lot of it made disturbing reading. Were you disturbed by it when you read that? Firstly, a lot of that is bullshit. A lot of that's fake. Secondly, you think that literally those logs are fake? Absolutely. Second. Okay, he just said all these chat logs are fucking bullshit, right? It's all fake. You know, he's got such a short goddamn memory. And, and this is why you don't get online and you and have to cover your ass because it's public relations. Let's just see what Mr. Tate posted on his war room. You know, the PhD pimps and hoes degrees. Update on the two living girls together. So they became good friends and everything was stable. The girl who moved lost her support networks at home. Cemented her move. Talking about staying forever. Can't wait to come back, etc. So I had to tighten the screw. I had to tighten the screw. This is his own fucking words. Uh, so I said somebody in her old town told me she worked in a sex club. I totally made this up from Sky. So he's completely manipulating and lying to her. You worked in a sex club. I did not work. Now she feel like she she has to. So look at this whole text, and then another element. Since she moved, she's been fed, but nothing else. She's been fed, but nothing else. She's broke. She can't go home. She can't leave the house. Man, I almost sound evil. Not almost. Uh, but I'm not. I'm a shepherd leading the sheep. Uh, she doesn't realize that following me makes life better for her. Even though she can't leave the fucking house. Even though she can't go home because she's a captive. She has no money. I mean, are you fucking high? Th this is the definition of sex trafficking. Started calling her a liar and threatened to kick her out. But the real goal is for her to agree to never go anywhere without me. Not even her hometown. 
I need her working. Not visiting friends back in her hometown. So putting nails in the coffin, saying my people there are talking bad about her. This is classic brainwashing and manipulation. Control, control, control. And guess what that control is? That control is coercion. So we have the force. Well, we don't have the force yet. That's in another area. But we have the fraud with the taxes. And now we have the coercion. This control. Limiting their... their she's got food, but that's it. You know, it's control. This is, this is what we're talking about here. You know, the, what kills me is guys with such hubris when it's so easily fact-checked. And he's saying all these text messages are bullshit? But the BBC verified them. The BBC verified them. Are they the same people who verified the vaccine? Those people. And this guy could never testify. He could never testify. But I don't know if you have a Fifth Amendment right against uh, self-incrimination or something similar to it in, uh, in Romania. But, I mean, you, you got an audience of one. you got a judge. Let me ask you about the lover boy method. So the suggestion is that you and your brother and others... Uh, but you, let's talk about you, that you deploy the lover boy method where you would make women fall in love with you, you would then persuade them to do uh, webcam. TikTok. Webcam. Let me just talk about the lover boy method for a second. When you're in a position of power, when you have a position of wealth and you flaunt it all over the place, there's all kinds of people that will come out of the woodwork to follow you. There just, they're just is. And you have a responsibility when you have that power. You have the responsibility to treat people decently. And instead, he used that power uh, to his benefit and manipulated that power to extract whatever the fuck he could out of these girls. Stuff, right? TikTok. Okay, but wait, let's call it webcam stuff, right? No, the let's not call it that. The indictment is about TikTok. Okay, what would you make the women do? The indictment's not just about TikTok. The indictment's about TikTok leading, leading into a webcam. Or what would they do with you? I don't make anybody do anything. Okay. In fact, let's talk about the Loverboy method. I don't make anybody do anything. There's message after message after message after message. And the messages I just read. The post on the war, his own site says he needs to make sure that they work and make that dependence. The whole thing was about how he can make them dependent upon him and then make them just absolutely be beholden to him and not being able to to do what they want, absolutely be beholden to him and not being able to to do what they want. They, they say, ah, he's, he's making women do what well, we found, found conversations, conversations where he gave advice on how to go viral on TikTok. TikTok. Mm -hmm. He's making women do TikTok, but, but he isn't being, being horrible, horrible to them. He's, he's not, not hitting them. them. He's, he's not, not being mean to them. So, okay. So he's saying he's not being mean to them. He's just, oh, he's just being so sweet. Oh my God. I wish my daughter could date Andrew Tate. Fuck that. The accused Tate uh, told victim CB that she had to obey his words and wishes, referring to himself as a king. Uh, in the accused Tate's view, uh, that was the only way the relationship could exist. The victim, CB, had to obey him completely. The more the victim, CB, resisted, the more violent the accused Tate became, causing trauma and suffering to the victim. The accused Tate uh, was always violent when he had sexual relations with the victim CB. In this regard, the victim CB mentioned an incident that occurred in the UK when which she and the accused Tate, Andrew, consumed alcoholic beverages. The physical violence exerted by a Tate affected the victim CB's breast implant and caused an injury to her eye. She provided photographs and messages related to these injuries to the authorities. So... When you say that there's no evidence, one has to look at this in the totality. We've got Andrew's own statements. We've got the posts of the war room. We've got her statements, and they're corroborated by photographs and messages from Tate. So later on in the indictment, he... he he intimidates her and threatens her, saying he's super connected and you don't want to go to the police. Now, when you have somebody who is, she's probably in her early 20s, or if that, no money, no way to get anywhere, no power, no power, zero power. And that is what he did. He, he went after the powerless. 
on that last point, you don't say if a woman doesn't want to work, a man should take care of it. You say a woman shouldn't work. I say my woman won't work. Right. I'm talking about my personal experience. I said any girlfriend of mine, because I'm an extremely fortunate financial position. I was before Romania took everything, of course. I have hundreds of millions of dollars. So because I am- Hundreds of millions of dollars, that's not true. So because I am in my position, I would not my, want my woman to work. I think there's more important things she can do. If you have hundreds money. of millions of dollars, where you said you had a worth of 17 million. Where's no, I the, said they took 17 million. Years. So where's the rest? Oh, was that a slip? Was that a slip? They took 17 million. I made hundreds of millions of dollars. And you had all this catty bullshit that you did at the beginning where you wouldn't tell Pierce Morgan, you know, how God is paying your bills. And if you look, you know, through the indictment, and you see how they're, and really hustling. And that's what they call themselves, Hustler University. They're hustling these girls out of small amounts of money. It's not hundreds of millions of dollars. It, it's, it's petty bullshit. And, but they need it. You know, they need it because they're behind the eight ball and everything. Uh, they must have taken it. I think they have it. Or maybe I lost it. I think I lost it somewhere. They might have taken it. I might have lost it. I don't know. <laughs> Very catty. You, you've never had hundreds of millions of dollars. Of course not. You haven't, have you? Of course not. You said they took all your assets. Exactly. Well, did they or didn't they? Of course, they took everything. That smug... Tell me that that's going to work in front of a judge. Tell me that that smug smile that... Oh, of course they did. Yeah, they, they must have. They, I mean, they'll be watching this. Are they to assume that there are hundreds of millions more dollars they haven't got yet? Well, they're they watching go this. That's right. They took absolutely everything. You have it all. Right. That, that, that taunting the fucking prosecutor. <laughs> Here's the thing. Okay, I say that so much. Here's the thing. The prosecutors, when they see a guy like this, guess what they are? Fucking motivated. And, you know, the feds are, are just tenacious. So when you sit there and you're smug, you're better off being quiet. Park the illegality aspect to one side. Do you feel it was moral? Ten years ago... I helped women promote their profiles on the internet. Correct. Ten years ago. Mm. Firstly, I have not been involved with it for seven years. It's not how I make money. I haven't touched it for a very... Ten years ago, he helped women... So that would have been, what, 2013, 2012? He helped women promote their profiles on the internet. And that's really what he did? No. He created a factory. Remember you said at one time he had 75 girls working for him? I mean, it's just absolute nonsense. If you go to page eight of the indictment, he said all he did was help people 10 years ago. 10 years ago, he helped some poor, unfortunate souls uh, get famous on the internet or you know, get profiles on the internet. But on July 19th, 2020, this is on page eight of the indictment, Tristan Tate sent the following audio, me audio message indicating uh, his control over the accounts and the exploited individuals. The new girls I have, the new girls I have, including the girl with the statue, I wouldn't trust any of these bitches on OnlyFans. I wouldn't give any of them the password. Then he goes on to say, I don't want any of them to have passwords for Pornhub, Xvideos, OnlyFans, MFC. I don't want them to have passwords. I don't want them to have anything. MF and MFC is my free camps. It's, a, it's, you know, your webcam. And this is 2020. This is not 10 years ago. He goes on to say, transmitted the following audio message revealing their operational approach. Primarily, I'm going to work these bitches like slaves, and I don't want to write down the MFC score much. So when they stop performing well on MFC or stagnate or after they finish the video, after all, all the tokens can be taken out of the room, and I'm going to change something and then make them uh, work more hours and hours and hours i work them like slaves tristan tate then also says no work like slaves minimum 10 to 12 hours a day you know and if they say oh it was a job you know there i i had a sex trafficking trial and the prosecutor in that case had probably the best line i've ever heard and, and it, would, it was devastating to our case you walk away from a job you run away from slavery. Well, I mean, and I, in that case, I represented a... All right, that's enough of that shit. Here's the thing. This is just part one. And, and what I wanted to do in this video is just take what he's saying and juxtapose it to facts. 
juxtapose it to the indictment. The indictment's 300 pages. It's available. And I suggest you read it for yourself and and, and compare it to what he's saying because it's bullshit. If this is my client, I probably would fire my client if he went on TV like this because it's like you're going to make my job almost impossible. So our reaction uh, to Andrew Tate as we kind of go on because there's going to be a part, part two to this and uh, whatever's relevant, we'll kind of analyze it. And we might do a deeper dive on, on the indictment itself. But this just goes to show you what he's saying compared to what the facts on the ground are. And, and it has to be tested. So, you know, the, the statements are not cross-examined yet. So that's the one thing that you got to keep in mind. So we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Acts. Make sure you subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. Sign up for Patreon, and we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm part of Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23-hour lockdown, please, is that my goal?